Hello, everyone. I'm here again with Louis Bent, and today we're going to talk about some kits. Louis, how are you doing today? I'm very well, Baden. How are you? Oh, I'm doing good. It was very tough making this list. I don't know about you, but we've had some belters, haven't we? Yeah, some fantastic kits from both. Well, mine and your lifetime spans relatively the same, the same uh, length of time, but we've had some fantastic kits, and it's very hard to whittle it down to 10, I think. Yeah. That's a valid point. Just to clarify to everyone, this is all kits in our lifetimes. I know I'm born in 03, 2003. You're a 2003, aren't you as well? Yeah. So it will be from 2003 to 2021, 22. And this will be our list from that time period. So we'll get right into it. And Louis going to be the brave one to go first. So he'll say it, what his favorite kit is, and then we'll re react to it. Louis, what is your 10th pick for kits? So my 10th pick for kits was uh, quite, well, I say it was, uh, I started from the top upwards, top downwards, to be honest, made it a bit easier for myself because obviously I know my favourite kits better than my 10th favourite kits. But in 10th place, I've gone for the 2021-22 away shirt. So our nice little sort of black and red checkered. Is, is, that, is that your 10th as well? Yeah, it's number 10 for me. Yeah, there we go. Great minds think alike. Yeah, I was going through the list and I thought, yeah, it's a, it's a great shirt. Not quite got the heritage and the history or, or the fantastic memories behind it just yet. Obviously, could go could rise. A lot of my kits that I picked are based upon memories because obviously blue and white stripes does get a bit repetitive. So I based them a little bit on memories. But this one, we could see this move up the rankings in future. But uh, for now, it's a solid kit in tenth place. Yeah, I agree with you. Tenth place for me as well. Um, good kit. I love the red and black combo. Red being my favorite color. It just was an easy pick. Um, and simply, I mean, the patterns, you look at the patterns, it's sort of shark looking and it's different. So I just really liked it from the second I saw it. And I thought from that moment on, I'm going to get this kit. So it's just that simple. The one critique maybe why it isn't in my a little bit higher in my list first of all like you said it's new and it's not got any real history to it but also I kind of wish the writing on the back was like a nice red or something like that that's one other thing and I wish this gr green dot uh, was also yeah. red I think that just would elevate it a little bit more but yeah, yeah I totally agree with you and we're off to a booming start yeah off to a fantastic start uh I'll go ahead and, and go straight into ninth place then so this one is the 2011 to 12 home kit, which I believe is the famous 5-1 uh, kit, which is obviously why I picked it for this particular reason. Just the memories of having that shirt as a young lad, having my full name on the back, which was a bit of a weird one for me. I had Louis Bent 11 on the back, which was a strange one, but, you know, such as such as the little child I was then. But however, I think it's definitely a fantastic kit with some great memories attached to that, that win. Uh, Odd and Wingy wearing that kit was just just something that I will I will always remember and wearing that kit. Baden, what have you got in uh, what what have you got in ninth place? Number nine, our kit from 2019-20 that obviously saw us get promotion. Um, just a nice blue and white stripes. To be honest, I wanted to put the yellow and green, but I put this one just because I just liked the blue and white this year. I thought this was the one I ended up getting, so I think it's nice and. The reason it didn't get higher is I just think I would have liked the stripes to be a tad bit thicker. And again, with this sponsor here, um, I'm not a big massive fan of the big ideal boiler sponsor, like the square. I like it better how in this year's shirt, it has just the letters on it and not the big square. So that's what really made or break it for me. But I like there's the little, little patterns in the mm -hmm. sleeves and all of that. And it's just overall a really nice kit, and Puma did a good job with this one. Definitely. Yeah, I like that. Uh, for some reason, Nathan Ferguson springs to mind, uh, and I can hear hissing like a snake from, from the corners of the Albion fan base with that one. But, yeah, yeah it's, it sort of reminds me of him. So in eighth place, I've gone for a uh, 2015 to 16 away shirt, which... Um, Admittedly, I had to research the year, but it, for, for those uh, who don't have, well, obviously, Ben's not modelling this one for this particular kit, but it's uh, the one where uh, the red with the black sort of pinstripes yeah. down it, which was a, quite a nice uh, quite a nice kit for kit for, um, for Albion that season. It had 
The only reason it's not so high up on my list is because it had this weird, like, sort of fishnet sort of design around the collar and around the bottom. Yeah, it's just, it's the away kit of that one. That's why it's not. It's the same, it's the same color as well. <laughs> yeah, it's not so uh, high up on my list with that one. But <clears throat> a good memory I have of it is a uh, Craig Gardner scoring a free yeah. kick against Chelsea. Yeah, uh, away at Stamford Bridge. So that kit was quite nice. I liked the uh, the logo on that one. The just the WBA. It was quite old fashioned. So I quite like that about it. So yeah, in terms of eight place, uh, that one takes a, a, a nice little place in there. A good kit. Um, you'll see it in my list at some mm -hmm. point. Okay. It's it's one of my personal favorites. It's from the year that the the boys traveled over to the U.S. and I got to see them. So that year is going to have a heavy amount of bias for me those kits now i'm gonna not say too much about it because it's gonna be yeah. in my list i'll get to that when i get to it but for me the next kit is 2012-13 home kit it's the year that we had romelu lukaku and it has the blue sleeves and just a classic blue and white design and unfortunately i don't have that one that was a year i took off from buying the kit and i know you might say shame on me for that yeah. one but it's just for that one, it's all about the memories. Having look, Romelu Lukaku, who's probably the best striker I've ever seen West Brom have, having the best season I think I've seen West Brom player have. So I think that simply just is enough for me to say that's one of my favorites. Also, it's just a good kit. It's a solid kit. It's not anything that's going to be, oh my gosh, that's amazing. You know, we've got to write home for that one. But it's good. The one thing that no, I'm that knocks it down a bit for me. I think I'd rather have white sleeves on on a West Brom shirt than the navy blue sleeves. I just think it's just a little bit cleaner that way. But that's just personal preference. Yeah, well, I, I can safely say that you'll be hearing a bit more about that kit later on in my list, as that was one of my. I think actually that was my favorite. I'm gonna stop beating around the bush. That was my favorite season watching West Bromwich Albion, highest league position I think I in in the Premier League I saw in my lifetime. So, yeah, we'll we'll discuss a bit more about that later. But Lukaku, um, definitely wearing that kit is a massive memory for me. So, let's go for my my seventh place pick, which is the 2014. 15 home shirt which if i remember rightly was our uh, baseball inspired shirt and the only year i think apart from this season that we haven't had the traditional blue and white stripes in my lifetime so it was a bit of a pinstripe design a white pinstripe with blue sleeves again which i don't think baden would be a big fan of the blue sleeves but i think it was definitely a i, I like the way they switched it up i remember first seeing it like that like i saw this season's home shirt and thought that's disgusting but as we sort of played in it, I, I started to quite like it. Saido Berahino is, is a bit of a memory wearing that kit, I think. Um, Baden, I don't know what you reckon about that, if we're going to see it on your list at all. but You won't be seeing it on my list. Oh. Um, I don't mind. As a shirt, I think it's a fine shirt. It looks good. I just personally, as a West Brom fan, I'm not a massive fan of not having the, the big stripes. Because even this year, I know we don't have – these kind of stripes but at least it is a sort of stripe formation on the shirt of the thick stripes whereas mm. that shirt was literally just pinstripes so I mean as a shirt I don't hate that shirt it's just not a shirt for me where I look at it and think yeah that's a West Brom shirt and that's I think that ruined it for me we had a good season that year to be fair that was the beginning yeah. of the Tony Pulis era at West Brom and he did a good job of keeping us in the league and bringing in some good players. When it comes, what comes to mind to me is players like Jolie and Les Scott, um, the beginning, the beginnings of Darren Fletcher in that shirt. Yeah, it's yeah, that's what comes to mind for me. But it's just not for me. Yeah, that's that's fair. That's fair. I can I can get that. Uh, it was just. It's just something I, I quite like it when we do something a little bit different, but it has to be different in a nice way. And I quite like that one. But yeah, that's fair enough. I, I understand that. So, Baden, what have you got in, in your seventh place? It's a very small kit, as I can this see. This one, the guys, this is my very first West Brom shirt. And it's from the 2004 5 season. And mm. it's come with the shorts as well. It's got the white shorts somewhere in here. <laughs> um, I'm never going to get rid of this thing, first of all. I just, I love it because there's something special about your very first kit. First, first and foremost, 
Um, and I do, I do love the T-Mobile sponsor. I think that was, that's a classic for us. I think it's one thing that it's going to go down as one of our longest standing sponsors. So I think, you know, that's just a great shirt. Now, I don't really remember this season. There's not a lot of memories there. Things I like about this shirt, though, you got the classic blue and white stripe design. I do like the little red hints on the sleeve. I'm a massive fan of having red in a West Brom kit because I just think it goes well. It sort of fits to the little berries on our badge. And also then as well, you get the red shirt number on the back for, for it. So it's good. Um, but yeah, I mean, first kit, I've got many pictures of for when I was a kid, like a baby in this. And it was one of my favorite shirts to wear. And it's just simply, it's, that's what it is. Oh, that's a, yeah, that's a good choice. I, I can safely say that is also going to be popping up on my list for almost, almost identical reasons to, to yours, Bade. And it's, it's a very nice kit. And that, that T-Mobile sponsor, it, it, it's got that texture to it. And I really like how it's, it's a bit, it's almost a bit fluffy in that sort of yeah. way. It's, it's a bit of a different texture to this classic, just, printed on with a little bit of you know whatever material plastic or whatever it is they make that with but respect that uh, that'll be coming up on my my list uh, very very soon I think but in terms of my sixth place kits I've gone for the 2017-18 home shirt which was the season that probably one of my worst uh, apart from last season as an Albion fan uh, Alan Pardew, Tony Pulis, Darren Moore coming in and all doing their bit. Uh, I, I quite like the shirt because I think I, I really like the way that there was blue all around the collar and all around the shoulders and all around the back, all around the back as well. Uh, I, I just have lots of memories of, of us having some reasonable performances, even though the season wasn't that that good in, in that shirt. And yeah, the, we had some good players that season. I mean, Kr Krakowiak is one that springs to mind who wasn't very good for us, but is a player that is actually quite a good footballer, just never showed it for us. So it's one that it's a, it's a mixed feelings regarding memories, but I think it's a, a tidy kit itself, Baden. I don't know what you think about that one. See, I've already said it in this video. I'm not a massive fan of the navy. The navy being the primary color on the shirt. Mm -hmm. I'm also not a massive fan of having a plain back on the shirt and no, okay. and having stripes on the front and not stripes on the back. So. I wasn't a massive fan of that kit and pairing it together with my not so fond memories of that year. <laughs> yeah. it, it's difficult. I, it's not one of my favorites. It's, it's not a bad kit. Like it certainly does the job, but it's not one that I'd say I look back on and say, wow, I love that. Yeah. One thing I do like about it though, you get the fond memories of, unfortunately that was the year that um, Cyril Regis passed away mm -hmm. so I do have the fond memories of the year the games where we had the Cyril Regis little yes. emblem on the shirt and I think that I think that was a great little tribute to him so I did I did like that but beyond that not a massive fan of that kit fair enough so Baden what have you gone for I've got another uh, small one here Oh, oh yes, okay. And I believe this is the same year as the kit I just showed you, so that would be 2004 five. Yeah. And this was the away kit from that year, and it's the navy blue away kit. It's unlike any away kit we've ever had. I don't think we've had another navy blue away kit, at least in my lifetime. So I just love the colors on it. It it's so us without being a blue and white striped shirt. It's got all our main colors on it, but it also just is different so that it can be an away shirt. I like this red, I've said it, I just said it, red's my favorite color. So having red on the shirt is always great and having navy on it is also great, but it's just the uniqueness. It's not, again, the memories. This one I have a little bit more memories of because this one's a bit bigger, so I wore it. I would have worn it a couple of years after that as well. So just going to pubs and different stuff. And I've mentioned it in past videos before when we would make trips to the U S and going to British pubs and watching the West Brom game. And yeah. when we'd win, it would be fantastic. And this was always another one. That's just one of my favorite shirts. 
So nice. yeah, I respect that. I like that one. I think um, got some framed pictures down the corridor about of that season and in the players wearing that shirt. So it's definitely a definitely a nice one. It's not. I, I can confirm it's not in my top ten, but. I can I can respect that. I like I like the little diagonal design. We I don't think I've seen that enough from Albion. I've seen it a lot from other teams, but certainly not from Albion enough. But going into top five now, aren't we, Baden? These are our top five favourite West Brom kits. Which is which is this is where it got really tricky when I start with obviously I started with first place, but this is where it was tricky to slot them into a top five. But in fifth place, I've gone for a little controversial option because it wasn't popular and that and that's that's putting it lightly. Um is the 2018-19 away shirt, which, if you cast your mind back, guys, there was a yellow and green design with a collar, a green or a, a green collar on the on the shirt, which was uh, pretty pretty controversial at the time. I personally really liked it because, uh, as you said, that 17-18 um, home shirt did it had connotations to Cyril, Cyril Regis and obviously that iconic. Uh, iconic goals that he used that he was scoring for us in that particular shirt where it was you know almost like this polo shirt that we that the players were wearing to play football it reminded me a lot of that and I quite quite like that kit I, I can confess to not buying it at the time as as you had in the 2012-13 season not buying a shirt I did the same in that season and I didn't buy any shirts so I don't have that one to hand but I, I still think it was a, a neat kit I don't know what you thought about the collar or anything but it was, it was yeah. quite it hit it hit hard in our fan base, that's to say the least. I'm now realizing something that I didn't mention for the 2013 2012-13 that year. I bought a shirt. I bought a Ben Foster goalie shirt. Oh, okay. I just wanted to slip that in there because Benny was my favorite player that year, and until you know, Big Rom took over. Now, I've got I've got to admit I do have that kit, the yellow and green, and I. I do agree with you in the sense with the heritage of it, how it was a nice little nod, particularly, I think it was probably influenced by the fact that the year before Sio Regis died and they wanted to pay the full tribute there. I'm not a massive fan of that particular shirt just because I find a football shirt, you want to be able to wear it out in public and um, feel like you're go if you're going somewhere where you can just be casual and not have to worry about what you're wearing. You can wear that shirt and maybe you slip a, like a track top or whatever on top of it or something on top of it, like a jacket, and it's fine. But I just think the collar on it was not fantastic. I'm not a big fan of that particular collar. I think that collar shirts can be executed well. I just wasn't a massive fan of that. And also, it goes back to what I talked about with the 1920 kit the big ideal boilers. That was the first time we saw that on a West Brom shirt. I wasn't a big fan of that either. Now, I do think that kit, it was, it was, I, I liked it because of the heritage, but overall, I'm not sure I'm a massive fan of it. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. I think the, the color and like the eccentricity of the design was kind of what, what upset fans because I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that was the first yellow and green kit that we sort of bought back. I think yeah. obviously the couple of years after we've we obviously had the yellow and green kit as well, but that was the first time we bought it back. So for that reason, it was probably quite controversial. But uh, Baden, dipping into your top five now, what uh, what sort of thing did you go for with that? We moved to five and we're going to revisit one of the kits that you were talking about earlier. It's 15, 16 away. The red and black pinstripes. Um, Great memories from that. That was the year we went and saw um, West Brom in the States, as I previously mentioned a couple minutes ago. And, you know, it was just great. We, when we got to the States, we caught, saw a couple of West Brom fans and that had just come out. So a couple of the fans had the new kit, which was the first time I got to see it. And it was extremely nice. I was planning to buy it, but unfortunately something got in the way. Um, in the form of a certain player, but we already know that story. Um, but yeah, I love it. The pinstripes on it. It's nice to have the red and black. I love the just having the WBA. It's, it's a good change of pace. It's actually one thing I really like about the kit you just mentioned. It, 
it didn't have the big badge. It just had the WBA. Yeah. Um, and I did like that. And I like, you see it on this one. This is the home kit from that year. They have the little patterns on the sleeves. It's like a polka dot sort of mesh thing. And it's the same on the collar. I, I actually really like that. So that's why it's in my top five. Nice. Yeah, I, I can I can respect that. It was obviously one of my list, but didn't quite make it make it into the top five. So it's really hard to nail down five kits as of your favorite, especially as we probably had over over 30, 36 kits or probably over 40 kits during our in our lifetime. So yeah, I, I rate that kit and I liked it a lot. I liked the simplicity of the design. It was uh, of the badge design, particularly. I think we need a bit more of that variation. I know that the badge is the badge and it shouldn't change, but sometimes maybe on an away kit, if you're making it a bit more vintage, it's nice to see something like that, like that little badge and change it around a bit. But let's go for my final away kit of the list, which is the 2016-17 away kit, which... Uh, if uh, if you guys remember, it was a, a black design. I oh, always love a black away kit. I've actually forgotten to put 2010-11 away kit, which was also black in my list, but that, that can that can be laid to rest there. But uh, the 2016-17 kit with the electric blue running down as, as pinstripes, it was it was it was a fire, well, a cold kit, I'm gonna say because it was blue, but it was a lovely kit. And uh, I think that was a relatively successful season for us as well. I thought we did really well with Tony Pulis in charge in that particular season. Um, and it was just a fantastic kit. I mean, I think that probably still fits me now, but um, I can't find it. But it does probably still fit me, which I'm, I'm glad to hit, glad to see if I ever find it, that it will still fit me. But yeah, I thought it was a fantastic kit, Baden. I don't know about you. Didn't you ship it to Canada? Well, I, I, pro I probably could if I could find it. It's probably buried under some some old trousers or something in my wardrobe. But I, I do like that kit. I I I like it. It reminds me of Hal Robson Canu's goal. I think it was Southampton where he scored. Yeah, an absolute mm. banger of a goal. But it's a good kit. The the one critique I have with it is it's just not. There's ones that I like better. It's no, there's nothing wrong with it, but if we're talking now at this point, my list it just I think it was just on the outside looking in. There's nothing yeah. wrong with it. I do like it. It's different. I like I do like me in that shade of blue, particularly as well. It was sort of a theme a lot across our kits because it was also I'm not sure if it's the exact same color, but it was very similar to the color of the blue that we had on our home kit that year. So mm. I just, I like it. It just missed the top 10 for me. Okay. That's, that's fair. I, I can, yeah. At least you show appreciation for it. That's, 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 that, that, that's, that's, that, that makes it allowable to be honest. But Baden, what, what have you gone for if we're heading into your top four? So now we're, we're going back to back red kits here. So I'm going for the third yeah. kit of 2011, 12. Uh, yeah. Um, Again, my bias of the fact that I went to England that year shows because that was the year I went to England and got to experience West Brom game for the very first time. But 2011-12 was a very special year for me in my soccer watching career. Um, that, was, that was when I fell in love for, with the Premier League, to be honest. And it was... It was a good year for West Brom. We finished 10th place in the league. Um, we had Roy Hodgson, a great coach. And that kit, it wasn't, there wasn't anything about it that was complex, but it was a nice shade of red. And I always, I liked the Bodog sponsor. I thought it fit nicely on that kit. And it just was simple and a nice shade and it was good. Um, I can picture Morrison, Jimmy, Jimmy Morrison hitting, yeah. I think it was a, I believe Blackburn, correct me if I'm wrong, he had that fantastic yes. right into that's... the bottom corner. But otherwise, that's the kit for me. That's the, th that's the only third kit for me that's made the list. So um, it's just a great kit. It's yeah. simple, but sometimes yeah. simple is, if it's executed right, simple is good. Yeah, I agree, definitely. I, I, I'm kind of, as we're going through your list, obviously I'm, I'm noticing you, obviously you like red and it's a lot of reds. I'm, I'm noticing how much I kind of like the reds that we've had. Obviously I mentioned the kit on there that was red, but I'm starting to 
sort of warm. I, I never used to like it, but now I'm sort of looking at it. I, I really like this year's kit, which unfortunately isn't on my list, the home kit with the red on it. And I think red, it, add, it, it contrasts quite nicely with the blue and white. And it's always nice to have a shirt number that's red. What really gets in my nerves, I don't know if it gets on yours, Baden, is when we have the yellow and green kit and they still use the red. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that is a, that is a killer. Yeah. It's, or it's realistically, a... I think they probably should make the plate out, like have a square plate and make it green or yellow or whatever the square yeah. is. It's nasty when they do that, but yeah, I like a good red. I I, I respect that, and I uh, I think that's a that's a good choice to stick in there. Another red kit, and obviously, I think Liam Ridgewell is the one I have the memories of with, with that kit, and it's a bit a bit odd because I think he scored like a back post header. I think oh, actually it might have been in in that Blackburn game. Yeah, I think he scored in that one. I think I can remember him like putting his arm in the air like this and sort of wheeling away in celebration. But yeah, that's a weird. Another weird. one is Paul Sharner. I don't know why. I think yeah. he pulled the kit when it first came out. Mm. So I think that's another one that I just, I think of him. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, that's such a good kit. I respect that going in your top four, Baden. It's top three now for, for, for us both. And I'm heading in with the third place, which you've already mentioned is the 2004-05 home shirt. The nice little little kit that you've got there, which was also my first home shirt, which is why I put it in the list. And uh, I always remember from that from that year onwards, um, learning about West Brom, obviously not being a massive fan of them, but always wearing the shirt. Every time we walked past the T-Mobile shops in England, I used to say, say West Brom, West Brom, that's West Brom. And it, obviously it's just a mobile shop, but it's just that sponsor always became associated with West Brom. Obviously, I don't think you get T-Mobile here anymore, but you know, it's one of those things where I used to just always walk past shops and say, West Brom, that's West Brom. But it's yeah, it's just a, such a obviously I don't remember too much about that season being, you know, not even probably only just one years old. But yeah, it was just a, a lovely kit. And it's certainly one that I think I may have to repurchase in a bigger size. Don't know about you, Baden. Yeah, that that's a funny story because it reminds me when we went to England, I was still quite young. So I do recall walking past a Barclays bank mm. and thinking, is that a Barclays Premier League shop? because <laughs> it's sort of a similar sort of thing right because yeah it's the association right so I, yeah. I mean that kit that's another one for me um I've got such fond memories of wearing this shirt when I was younger that it might be one I would maybe look into investing in getting a bigger size of but I mean yeah I just am happy to have my little my, my favorite my little shirt still I'm happy to have it you know yeah, I might have to invest in a bigger size as well. But it just shows you how iconic sponsors can be in, in football and, and sport. It, you know, you, you really do latch on to that. But Baden, into your top three now. Who have you gone for in third place? Third place, we go with the 2011-12 home, which is the... Uh, it's long-sleeved as well. And mine's long-sleeved because they had run out of the short sleeve when I went and I was I wanted the blue and white, so... It actually, it's, it's kind of a blessing in disguise because this is the only long sleeve West Brom shirt I own. It's too small now, but um, actually it might still fit me. It's a size small in men, so it might fit me. But um, I wanted the short sleeve shirt, but they ran out of stock of it. So I ended up having to get this. And it was between Chris Brunt and Peter Odom Wingy that year for the kit on mm -hmm. the name on the back. So I went with Odom Wingy and he repaid me when I went home and he obviously got the hat trick. The thing I like about this, I'm going to give a little throwback to our unpopular opinions video that we did last time out. I think Bodog's the best sponsor we've ever had. We had it for one year, but I just think it goes again with my love of the red. It matches well with the shirt. It contrasts well. It looks good with the, how the name on the back is also the same color. Yeah. And that's what I love about this. This one's simple. There's not too much going on here. It's the blue and white on the sleeves, but again, it's the white sleeves. Yeah. And the collar's a little bit different. One thing I'm not a massive fan of is on the back here. It has it doesn't go stripe all the way to the bottom. It sort of does this little V mm. thing. But otherwise, I think this is third place for me. And again, it comes down to my bias as well, because that's the year I went. Yeah. Um, I remember buying a match magazine with Chris Brunt modeling that shirt on in as a poster 
and I still have that poster as well. So it's, it's just why this kit's so special to me. Yeah, it, it, I've just noticed that bit along the collar that like sort of strips up to the up to the neck. If you showed me that in isolation, just a little f frame of that, I know exactly what shirt that is. It's yeah, it was one of those things that I just sort of latched onto. But Bowdogs was a fantastic sponsor. I'd, I I I'm gonna show you. Obviously, talk about my favorite sponsor in a minute on my favorite shirt, but. It was just a, it was a great sponsor and it was really recognizable. Obviously, it's a betting company. And I, obviously, I think that's that's probably being eradicated in football at the moment, having betting as sponsors. But I thought I thought that was a cracking sponsor and it was so iconic with Odd and Wingy. It's just, yeah, great memories as an Albion fan being in that top flight and looking so secure up there as well. But it's top two time now, Baden. There's, we're getting to real crunch time now, about to reveal our favourite West Bromwich Albion kit of the of our lifetime so second place i'm going for a kit that you've already mentioned which is the 2012 13 home shirts which obviously romelu lukaku uh oh it's just probably for my favorite season it had my favorite game i've seen live which was five all man united against man oh, united there, eh? yeah it was just oh. a oh I, I i couldn't believe what i was watching I nearly went, well, to be fair, at half time I was crying because we were, we were, we were losing about, I think it was like three or four, one or something like that. And I was like, dad, I wanted to watch us beat Man United. And obviously we were playing really badly, but second half, Romelu Lukaku, one of the best strikers I've seen, as you said earlier at West Brom and probably the best striker that has gone on, that, that, that's left the club and, and the best striker that's gone on to be obviously fantastic in his own right at Chelsea and into Milan and, and Belgium and Man United and all those clubs. He, he's been absolutely phenomenal. And that kit just reminds me, reminds me of him. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm, I, I already touched on it a little bit there. It was a great season. It was an enjoyable one. It's the year after when we went to England. So once I had gone and seen West Brom play, I sort of just carried on and really started to support, support them. That year was another big year. It's one of this is really just my prime. The 2011, 12, 13, 14 period was when I watched the most of the Premier League. Um, it's always great to see us succeed. The 5 5 game was great, particularly because that's against the league champions as well. And yeah. probably the greatest manager we'll ever see in our lifetime. And also to add a little cherry on top of that, my favorite player outside of West Brom at the time was Robin Van Persie. So it's sort of, we did well in that game against such big p people in the game of football. And I just love the shirt. And it's just simple, really. Yeah. And um... it's another example of the simplicity and not doing anything too wild, but succeeding in it. Yeah. It was one of those things that, as well, that, um, crashing Sir Alex Ferguson big day. I know it's horrible to think of as one of the best managers of all time having his day spoiled by West Brom, but you know, it was a it was nice because I think a lot of teams it's you know the world was watching us and that game thinking, you know, man especially at halftime, Man United a 3-1, 4-1 at whatever it was, and thinking, yeah, West Brom had just rolled over here and giving up Sir Alex the send off he deserves, which he did deserve, to be fair to him, because he's a fantastic manager. But the fact that we just went and ruined his day whilst the whole the whole world was watching was so great. I, I love that game. But Baden, what have you gone for in second place for you? Well, guys, we're down to the final two. And I have to say, it, this, these two here were very tight. And you see the other one. These, this is the final two right here. We're down to the final two. And this one is number two, which we know... I think this is going to be a lot of West Brom fans, one of their very favorites. I know at the very beginning when I first saw it, I wasn't a massive fan of it just because I wasn't warm to the color of this blue yet, but I've grown to it. And I think it's my second favorite we've had. Um, I'm a big fan of this baby blue. I'm from the Toronto area. The Toronto Blue Jays have jerseys in this color. So it's something for me that's just sort of a nice little thing to add to it. Um, I'm kind of a sucker. This is one thing Adidas did in this period. They had the three stripes down the side of the shirt, and they also had the three stripes on the shorts. So it sort of was just a whole 
three stripes down the kit, which I thought was extremely nice. And it was the nice little teasing little blue right there as well. Yeah. Um, little things that maybe knocked it off the top spot. I mentioned it before. It's a blank back. There's no stripes on the back. If there was stripes on the back, um, maybe it would be the number one. And also, as you guys know, I love red on a kit. And I know you put the baby blue on it and you, that takes the red spot. But I do like a good red. And the sponsor, I mean, again, these sponsors, and I know this is going to be similar to the one that I have on this one, but I'm not a massive fan of these sponsors. But otherwise, you know, you know, and one more thing about it, I'm not a big fan of these badges. Like, uh, I, did, I know this is what they have now in the Premier League, but this badge here is always going to be my Premier League badge, my favorite. So, yeah, that's my number two. And yeah, I, yeah, that, that kit is... It screams Rondon to me. It screams Solomon Rondon to me, that one does. He scored his hat-trick against Swansea uh, in that kit. And Rondon was my favourite West Brom player at that time. And to see him, because everybody slated him most weeks, let's let's be fair, because he wasn't great at finishing chances. And to stick my two fingers up at most of the West Brom fans when he got that hat-trick was, was fantastic. And see, that kit reminds me of it. I don't think I had that on my list, but... Yeah. Def- it was definitely one that I considered. My sister came downstairs wearing it the other day and I was like, I completely forgot about that kit. Yeah. It was the, the year we had that electric blue and that light blue. It was yeah. it was quite refreshing. I quite like that. I mean, yeah. red was red's nice, but I think that, that was quite fresh. I like that. Me, for me, it's Johnny Evans in that kit. This is, that's the name on the back of this one. Ah, uh, yeah, but fair enough. When I, when I think of that year, it's Johnny Evans. It was the emergence of how good he is. And how good he's still doing a very good job at Leicester, but after sort of being disregarded by Manchester United, you never quite know what he was going to come in and become. But he was class. He's probably one of the only center backs for West Brom that I can trust that would be able to play out the back because he was very mm-hmm. composed. Um, but yeah, that kit. I mean, it was another great year. I think we finished we finished in the top half. We might have even gotten higher than top ten. So it was just, it was one of the great years of the club. Yeah, and Boaz Myhill comes to mind with that kit because I think that was the year that Ben Foster had a few injury problems yeah. and Boaz Myhill had to come in several times. And yeah, he was uh, he was just such a, he, he looks the most unlikely footballer, but he was so good, well, especially when saving penalties. I mean, it was remarkable, but obviously that kit, he didn't wear that particular one, but the, the corresponding goalkeeper kit. Yeah, he was just, he was so good. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, so let's go. Yeah, let's go for number one. And number one, drum roll, please, is uh, is this one. It's 2010 to 11, Home Shirt, my favourite sponsor uh, with Home Serve, with the phone number on it. It was a bit weird, but I, I really liked it. It's my first season as a, a proper season ticket holder going with my dad. Uh, remember Peter Rod and Wingy scoring on his debut. It was... Uh, our first season back in the Premier League for a few years. Roberto Di Matteo was the manager for a bit of that one. Roy Hodgson, what I think was a manager for a little bit of it as well for the latter half of the season. But yeah, it was a great, I really enjoyed that season. And this sponsor is just, it, it, I, it, it's iconic for me. And the silver Umbro badge is, you, you won't see Umbro very often on a, on a kit anymore because they're sort of fading away with their authenticity in, in football kits. But yeah, the silver Umbro badge, the little like, hashed markings and the little sort of dissolved into the white bits of the stripes was fantastic a collar which i'm not always a massive fan of but i, I liked on this kit and this kit for me was was my perfect west brom kit and will, will be the one I, I i'm definitely framing this once it once it gets a little too uh a little too uh small for me at some point uh-oh i gotta say something for a second no 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 I was thinking of this kit when I was thinking of my list of a future video of my least favorites. No. And I do have to say, there's nothing wrong with the shirt. The blue and white's nice. I do like a good, Umbro can make a nice classic kit. And Umbro was our makers of our kits when we had those great kits in the 70s. However, 
that sponsor make that breaks it for me. No, not the, home the, the big house for me. It's just not for me. Um, when I was younger, I thought it was, you know, like a pizza delivery service house or whatever. I didn't know what it was. So that for me, unfortunately, has not made it for uh, me. So. Baden, you, you, we, were, we were doing so well. We, we were, you know, we were doing so well through this podcast. And now you've, you've, you've chucked it all away by slandering the yeah, famous think, home serve sponsor. I think this is our very first disagreement that's actually like a proper disagreement in doing yeah, this video. So. Yeah, proper black and white disagreement as well. Baden, one of one of Baden's least favorite and my all time favorite West Brom kit from my lifetime. Oh, oh, God. Oh, go, go, let's right, Baden. Let's go over to you. We'll get. We'll get I'm going to call your your favorite shirt rubbish now. But what's your favorite shirt? It's this one, and this is simple because I've already. It goes through all the things. It checks all the boxes of stuff I've said um, earlier in this video. You've got. Obviously, the classic blue and white stripes, which is normal. You got the white sleeves. You got the best Premier League badge that's ever been. Uh, you've got the classic. You got the badge, and you got the only thing maybe would be if the Adidas. I would maybe rather on the side here. Sometimes it looks maybe a bit awkward here, but even still, it doesn't look that bad. I think the like the necks and the sleeve length are just very nice you got the red number on the back but more than anything with this kit it's the sto the story behind it for me it was the year we went and saw west brom the states i've said this already this video but it was the best holiday i've ever been on and this kit was given to me by chris brunt personally so of course it's going to be my number one and yeah, it's just simple. Sponsor's tolerable because it's a red sponsor. I'm not a massive fan of the TLC bet sponsor, but mm. it's it's not that it's not that bad. On the back, the, the blue and white stripes go all the way to the back. I'm not gonna turn around with it here, but and yeah, it just looks good. It's a classic West Brom kit and it's my favorite. It's it's absolutely disgusting and I hate it and it deserves to get now. I'm jo I'm joking. It's I I I respect that kit quite a lot. It has some nice memories. We signed Rondon that year. I remember. The only thing I don't like is the the mesh like collar and the the like the sleeves on the bottom. That was always so. I used to wear that kit for football training all the time uh, for, throughout that season and probably the season after. So it was quite annoying because I kept getting like I kept sticking my fingers in this mesh. Wow. I think that, that it, you were able to stick your fingers in it, especially as I had smaller hands. Uh, probably not now, to be honest. But yeah, it was it was a kit that I liked and a kit that I think I have some nice memories of players in that in that particular kit. But no, as much as I want to say I hated it after what you've done to to this beautiful shirt that I've got on, uh, I can't bring myself to say that. But it, it is a nice kit and it has some nice memories attached to it as well. Darren Fletcher wearing that kit is, is quite iconic for me. So, yeah, yeah. nice kit, Baden, and definitely a good story to go with it as your number one. Yeah, now, I don't mind. I don't know if you want to do this, but I want to give some honourable mentions for a second. Oh, yeah, yeah, go for it. Because I there was a couple that didn't quite make the cut. Now, I was going to say it, the black, the black and baby blue stripe, pinstripes uh, that you mentioned in your list, that's an honourable mention for me. It was very close. I have one goalkeeper kit that was sneaky, trying to get it. I was trying to get it in, but I just, I didn't have, I couldn't have it in there because it was a goalkeeper kit, but I don't think we ever wore this kit, but the year 2011, 12, the Bowdog year, we had a white goalkeeper kit. Now, I don't yeah, know. I, I, I've, I've worn that in goal before. I, I, with the with the pads on the bottom, I, I played a few games in goal when goalkeepers were injured for my football team, and I wore that kit. And it got, I, it, bear in mind, England's often a mud bath, especially if you play Sunday League. And I came back, and it was white when I left, and it was brown when I came back, and my face was all in mud. Yeah, that, that's a yeah, nice kit. I, they didn't wear it very often because mm. it probably was very similar with them. But I just think, as a shirt, I just think it was a nice looking shirt. Another one for me. And I'll just give, this is the final one. I'll do three of them. 
was the Lukaku year, the away kit, the red. Yeah. That was a really nice shirt. It had the blue on the sleeves. Fond memories in that. Chris Brunt scoring against QPR immediately comes to mind. Yeah. Um, Lukaku scoring against Newcastle when we lost 2-1 comes to mind. Just yeah. To but that's, those are three honourable mentions for me. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I didn't realise we were doing this, but I'll, I'll go in with a few that I've mentioned throughout the throughout the episode that we've done. Um, the sixteen seventeen home shirt, which was your your second favourite, the baby blue. I think that deserves to go in there. The two thousand and ten to eleven black shirt that opposed, that was the, the 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 sister of this one, which I really liked. Uh, this this lovely shirt that I'm wearing here. The black one was was a nice one. I liked that one, uh, and I thought that Carlos Vea for some reason is a is a is a big player in that shirt for me uh in terms of other honorable mentions uh if i've got any others that i can actually think of is probably this season's first shirt i quite like it i bought it over the away shirt i have to confess despite the fact that the away shirt is is uh is is, is in my top 10 but i think uh, I, i'll never buy an away shirt before the home shirt so yeah i quite like that one as well so there's a three honorable mentions from me yeah great all right thank you everyone for listening watching We'll be back with another video. I think we're probably going to be feuding a bit about maybe some kits that we don't like as much next time. Um, potentially one that my good friend Louis is wearing. Potentially <laughs> one that I've shown in this video. But we'll see you again soon. Thank you. Um, for more info, like and subscribe. Go follow the Baggies podcast. This man doesn't stop working. He does all the the post-game stuff, pre-game stuff, and has a lot of other content that's amazing. And if you feel a little bit spicy, follow him on Twitter as well. Louis Bent, I mean, he likes to uh, make some unpopular opinions. So <laughs> go for it. Yeah. Right. Thanks, guys.